How is it that over 26% of adults in America are suffering from a diagnosable mental disorder? Or that over the last decade, depression rates rose 18%, and now it's estimated that 322 million people around the world suffer from depressive disorders. Almost 18% of Americans are affected by anxiety disorders. And by all accounts, it's on the rise, especially within the younger generation. Something is very, very wrong here. We've created so many amazing drugs and we have really pushed medicine forward, right? But we are hovering on the surface. We're not treating the root cause. We're just handing out prescriptions, 15 minute visits, only looking at a limited data set on the person. I just felt this general sense of anxiety all the time. So I couldn't sleep, I had mental fatigue, uh, I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate. This is not right, this is not my child. I know, I know this is not her and we need to figure this out. With all the advancements in modern medicine, why are we still seeing a growing number of broken brains? Every other part of the body affects the brain our digestive health, our hormonal health, the quality of our gut bacteria, the strength of our mitochondria, our immune system, all of it, all affects the brain. There is still so much mystery about the way that this amazing organ translates experience into our body's functions. My view is that one singular thing that is so dramatic is uh, that of neuroplasticity. The key to living an extraordinary life depends on our brain health. Because if your brain isn't working, if your brain is broken, there's no way you can live a full life. And so the beautiful thing is, based on this information, again, you have the ability to take charge of the genetic destiny of your brain and create a life worth living. If you love broken brain, you're going to love broken brain too. We're going to go even deeper so we can achieve our best brain health together. I think a lot of people get so overwhelmed when they start to think about all the toxins that were bombarded that just researching a little bit, it, people just shut down because it's so overwhelming to think about everything we're breathing, everything we're eating, everything we're putting on our skin. We have, according to my calculations, at least 100 million structures in the US that are affected by toxic mold right now. And it's like beating my head against the wall to get any national priority to this issue. The awareness, I think, in our society needs to be much higher. The scary fact is that many of these toxins have been shown to cause cancer, birth defects, heart issues, and lots more. Make sure that the air you breathe and the water you drink is clean and pure. And I urge everyone to do something about it, to ensure that they live a healthy, happy, long, disease-free life. I'm not good enough. I'm not important. I'm not lovable. I'm a failure. Those are the kinds of limiting beliefs that we have. Our cells are going to receive that message and they're going to show up faster disease, faster aging. You have decreases in your ability to stay focused when, you're, when you have negative self-talk. You have decreased ability to reason, um, problem solve, and have mood control. What is the obstacle within yourself? and within your environment that prevents you from getting there? And then what, are, what is the plan in which you can set so that you can face those challenges within yourself or your environment? I think that it's very important not to look at whether the glass is half full or half empty, but recognize moment to moment that the glass is absolutely overflowing. We can train our brain to see the positive a huge body of evidence connecting stress and negative emotions like anger with um, ev every kind of chronic disease you can imagine, from cancer to heart disease to anxiety to depression to autoimmune disease. When you are hyper stressed out and you pump out cortisol, that cortisol has downstream effects all over. So it's really important to understand all of our hormones and that our, the fact that our hormones have this global system-wide effect. Your heart doesn't lie. It really does tell you what's happening with your autonomic nervous system. How is parasympathetic, the, the rest and digest, comparing to sympathetic, which is ramping you up? The brain and the heart have always been connected. There's constant messages being sent 
both ways. So as it turns out, the, the heart is a key player in how well the brain functions. Depression is not necessarily caused by a chemical imbalance. It's really actually caused by inflammation. Any kind of uh, systemic inflammation is going to affect every system in the body. It's taken conventional medicine a little time to catch up with the understanding of how the immune system works. And so we're understanding more and more the role of the immune system of the brain. I've seen people with being diagnosed and misdiagnosed with depression with bipolar disorder, and I've even seen some people being misdiagnosed with psychotic disorders. For 150 years, we've been led to believe that bacteria are terrible. They're the demon, they're virulent, we gotta eradicate them. There is a very potent uh, connection between uh, the gut health, immune health, and brain health. Without the, the microbiome, we, couldn't, we, we would cease to exist. The entire connection between the human and its environment is designed to bring health. Medical researchers are not that confused about the basic care and feed, feeding of human beings. There is actually something of a consensus today on the vast majority of points. Yes, there are some nuances people can disagree about, partly because not everyone is the same. A diet that works for one person may be you know, the completely wrong diet for someone else. We're seeing extraordinary uh, progress being made to understand exactly how we would define a specific diet for the individual, knowing that there's no one diet that's perfect for everyone. We're learning a lot about genes. Uh, there's a lot we know, there's a lot we don't know. Uh, but we are learning uh, some ways in which we can personalize diet and even lifestyle to best suit our genes. There's been studies to show that when we're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates, we're eating a lot of sugary foods, we're actually at higher risk of depression and anxiety, but we also see changes in the brain. When you are trying to set yourself up for a life that, you know, a life that you desire, a morning routine is an essential component to, uh, to doing that. There isn't a supplement, there isn't a superfood, there isn't some fancy exercise or trick or tactic or hack that you can do to replace sleep. Definitely some sort of rhythm and routine, something that definitely divides the daytime to the nighttime is key. In order for me to understand what's happening with a person's physical brain, the physical connections, and how well they're working, what I do is perform an advanced neurological evaluation. And I might look at things such as balance, and coordination, I might look at reaction time. Fascia is the fabric that encases everything from our muscles, our bones, our connective tissue, our nerves. If we have tight fascia in a certain area or an injury of some kind, we can tend to chronically be in our sympathetic nervous system, our fight and flight system. I think exercise is the one thing that is so lacking in modern society. As we age, again, we often have fairly poor a function of our mitochondria and in fact it's helpful actually to have turnover of the mitochondria so-called mitophagy it's a little bit like throwing out the worn out batteries so often my patients ask me how can i transform my health and wake up feeling good every single day i tell them it takes inspiration it takes intention and practical tools that we can use every day. If we reflect back on the 20th century and if i think of my training in nutrition it was all about overarching dietary guidelines from different opinion leading organizations. This is the age of the individual. And we know from research that we can ramp up the inflammatory process in our body just by eating one meal. I think purpose is so important because it gives us a sense of clarity. Because life is challenging. Life hits us in all directions. We have this concept that suffering and challenge are bad. It's not. You should push yourself. You should have measurable outcomes. My story is the reason I decided to make Broken Brain 2, because there are so many more missing pieces to the puzzle. And the last two years have led me on a journey to discover these missing pieces. And now I want to share them with you. But my story isn't the only reason I've decided to create this docuseries. There are millions of people out there that can relate with their own story of a broken brain. I've led thousands of patients toward a life of joy and vibrancy, and I want this for you too. I want you to wake up every single morning and give your highest gifts to the world. We are taking a hands-on approach to brain health this time, and I know you're gonna love it.